Hey everyone, thanks for coming for the update. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this update, some good and some not so good, as I'm sure most of you in the same situation can imagine, but it is what it is, right? In this update, we're going to hear again from my buddy Thomas on his sailing vessel Be Free over in the Shelter Bay Marina in Panama, and he's going to put us in touch with what's happening with some of the cruisers that are there in quarantine. We're also going to hear from Madalena's sister, Gaia, in North Italy, as well as her cousin Irene, both of which are right in the epicenter of all the worst stuff happening in Italy. We're also going to hear from Valentina at her family home up in the mountains, in addition to some of the changes we've been facing here personally on Sophisticated Lady in Colombia. I want to put out a special thanks to all of our patrons, all of our viewers, and all of our subscribers for all sticking with us and supporting us in this time. You, my friends, are what make this all possible and all worthwhile. So, thank you. There's been a celebration going on in town here as uh, the Colombian tall ship. I think it's the Gloria. You might remember. You might remember I uh, anchored in the same bay as that tall ship back when we were sailing past Barranquilla on our way to Cartagena. There we go. And if you look closely, you can see all the crew standing up in the rigging. They took down the big Colombian flag, and now they have the regular sized one. But there's all the crew, ready to go to sea. And that's the big Colombian tall ship, Glory, I think it's called. And that's the training ship for the Colombian Navy. Yeah, they're all up there singing as they set to sea. There she goes, pulling into forward. She's a beautiful ship. For a lot of those sailors, this is probably their first offshore passage. It's about 400, 450 miles, I think, from Cartagena to here. So even on that ship, it was probably a couple of days. They would have had some good wind behind them. And I haven't checked the weather lately, but I think they'll probably have close to a beam reach on the way back. At a supermarket. In a supermarket. I don't know why. He has no no quite nothing about that. See? He was there. Okay. Yo creo que no. Good morning, everybody. 
and so begins I think it's day eight <laughs> something like that anyway it's Saturday and just sitting on the bow and kind of splurging with a Bailey's and coffee it's not Sunday yet but what the hell beautiful day we got all our shopping done provisioning everything so today we're just gonna start on some small boat projects we got all kinds of new plants and herbs and stuff to work with on board so we'll do a little gardening and uh, I'll get you guys in on that as well so you can see what kind of stuff that is that we're picking for when we migrate into the Pacific so that we've got some edibles on board but for now just uh, sitting here chilling enjoying the beginning of a beautiful day here in San Andres Things are still moving on shore, you still see traffic going. They have imposed some more limitations, so there's no crowds or gatherings allowed after eight o'clock now. Everybody's supposed to be at home and stay in for the night. So that's one big change. Uh, apart from that, they still haven't restricted anybody from moving. Um, you know, I think some of the restaurants are still open. We'll probably go in today, just meander around a little bit, have a look and see what the actual situation is. But uh, yesterday, Maddie was in doing some shopping and reported that there was still a few places open, but not all. So a lot of places are still closing down. And, well, that's one change right there behind me. Uh, you can hear the engine running on our buddy's boat. I think it's Estefania. That was the guy that uh, you remember the other day dragged anchor in front of us here. And that day he came back to the boat so we actually got to meet him and really nice guys from Cayman Islands. And he's been in uh, San Andres for about three years now and running a fishing boat business. So he just goes out and fishes and brings the fish back for all the local restaurants. But he's been stuck here on paperwork, waiting for paperwork for about three months. So. He's been waiting to get authorized to go out to go fishing and it's been saying that they're gonna give it to him, they're gonna give it to him, but so far no luck. But he thought yesterday he might get it and this morning, well, he's got his engine running and yeah, it looks like he just pulled anchor. So I'd say he must have his clearance. So he's on his way out to sea. He said he's going out for 10 days if he gets clearance. So he's going out for 10 days and do some fishing and then he'll be back. Yeah, it looks like he's got his anchor pulled, so I think he's underway. That's that's a big change. They actually let somebody leave the island. That would be a first, because we've all been stuck here for a long time. There's no authorization from Coast Guard or, or Harbor Patrol, anything like that. They're just uh, locking everybody down, stay put. We'll see if he stops by. Maybe we can get a little update from him, see how things went, if he's actually heading out for the the fishing trip that he's been dreaming of <laughs> for the past three months. Anchors away. They are definitely getting underway. Shane, you got your clearance. Finally. Congrats. Two weeks, we back. Congrats, buddy. Have a nice barbecue. Have a good fishing trip. Thanks, buddy. We're surrounded the door. We'll see you on the flip side. Cold beer's waiting. Hey Rick, uh, this is a live update uh, from Shelter Bay Marina um, um, as you can see I'm still here I was supposed to transit the canal uh, Monday but uh, unfortunately uh, we had problems with line handlers and a lot of other things now it's also uh, 
just a matter of time uh, till they will close the, the breakwater and it will not even be possible to get inside of the breakwaters uh, into the entrance of the Panama Canal. So, but here's a little update for you. Um, um, some interviews with uh, some cruisers out in the quarantine. Take care in San Andreas, my friend. Hi, we're going to deliver provisions for the people out there anchored. The cruisers. On, uh, yes, a quarantine for 14 days or sometimes even more days. But So we have lots of volunteer here in uh, Shelter Bay Marina and we're uh, making sure everybody has their needs. out at uh, Anchorage to uh, look at the boats and uh, see how Quano and Eddie and the volunteers uh, provide all the boats with um, supplies. They're running out of food and water and uh, they took me with them out to uh, visit the boats waiting in quarantine. How long have you been here? This is our eighth day. Eighth day? Yes. Wow. Next Monday we should get out. Hopefully. So you're in quarantine waiting to let into the marina? Yes. In Vancouver. He just texted me. Okay. Oh. Cookies. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. He's happy. I'm in kind of, I'm starting to get in contact with the consulate. Okay. Because apparently there's a flight. That they're arranging for air transit flight. Hey, uh, Thomas, have you heard the latest news? Uh, yeah, I heard some rumors, but uh, I was out at um, Anchorage, so maybe you can apply to me. Yeah, they've uh, announced today that uh, canal transits for all boats under 65 foot have been cancelled until the 6th of uh, April. No. Uh, so, decision's been taken out of our hands, huh? So that means not even you are going to be able to transit the canal then? Not yet, no. So uh, we're stuck here with the rest of you. So yeah, our options are uh, getting less and less. Where's the refrigeration shop? Over here, back there. So as you can see, we were back at the same store two days previous with the same protocol the front door in effect and had no problem getting in. We just had to wait our turn because they didn't want to have too many people in the store at once, but once in we managed to find everything we needed.
So why then, two days later at the same store, did we run into this problem? Well, in a nutshell, we just ran into the wrong lady and in the wrong mood. Her job was to ID everybody entering the supermarket, which she was doing. She asked us for our valid government ID. We give it to her. She didn't like it, asked for another one. Okay, we gave her another one. She's looking for local ID and of course, we're not local. So it didn't matter what we gave her, she wasn't letting us in that store. We politely asked if we could speak to her supervisor so we could resolve the issue. She refused. Surprisingly, the ones most upset about it were the people in line behind us and started yelling at her that you can't discriminate against these people. These are foreigners, yes, and they are our guests. They need food also, so let them in the store. This just made her more upset and she just flat out refused to let us in the store. She wouldn't even let Maddie in the store to use the washroom after we'd been standing in line waiting for almost 40 minutes. So anyway, there was no way we were getting out of this one, so we left. Instantly, one of the local ladies came to us with some advice about an alternate supermarket, and one of the other guys that had been standing in line was helpful enough to take us over to one of his friend's stores where Maddie could use the washroom. Not only that, he continued to lead us all the way down to the alternate supermarket where they were more than happy to help us with anything we needed. Always a silver lining to every cloud, right? sanity at the end of an insane afternoon. Yeah. Welcome to the new world, people. It's like I said, our lives are not our own. We can't even go shopping now. <laughs> it turns into a full-blown adventure because some woman gets an attitude because we're not from here. So I guess we just wait and see what's next. Don't know if it's going to get better or worse, but yes. we got cold beer. <laughs> That's enough to make a few problems go away. Hello, um, I am recording this video from uh, Bergamo, which is my hometown and in the past days has become sadly known all around the world for being the most affected city by the COVID-19 virus. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the situation here because uh, it's bad. We don't have uh, medical staff, uh, we don't have medical equipment and our hospitals are full and I mean that people are being stuck in the aisles because we don't have space for them in intensive care and some of them die because they don't receive enough care uh, and they don't receive uh, what they need to survive. Our medical staff is putting their life on the, on the line here and most of them are getting sick as well. So the situation here is really bad. Our hospitals cannot stand this situation anymore. And actually they are building a temporary hospital, which is going to be, I think, the biggest in Europe so far, but uh, it's not going to be enough. And we, are, we don't have people that can work there, so we need help. Uh, in finding people, in finding equipment, and um, this is this is what it's it's like here at the moment. And uh, as far as I know, this is not the peak yet. So it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Allora, ciao a tutti. Sono Gaia. Ho 25 anni e vengo da Pavia, in Italia. Siamo in un periodo particolare che non è mai capitato, stiamo combattendo un virus molto forte che ha completamente stravolto le nostre vite. Io sono una studentessa e è da quattro settimane che l'università è chiusa, quindi sto studiando a casa, i professori hanno caricato le lezioni sul computer online e quindi diciamo che ci si arrangia in questo modo e ovviamente non, durante la giornata quello che faccio è tutto strettamente legato a stare in casa, non si può uscire se non per andare a fare la spesa dove però comunque quando vai al supermercato ci sono file e file di, 
di persone che mantengono il metro di distanza, eh, al supermercato fanno entrare poco alla volta, un tot di persone alla volta, così da non creare una, un insieme di persone. Poi si può uscire per andare in farmacia, anche lì è incredibile come le strade che sono vuote perché non passano praticamente macchine, sono riempite magari da persone che sono in coda per entrare per fare un, um, un acquisto in farmacia. Probably you have seen some videos uh, of the past few days where the army had to come to Bergamo and take our dead to other cities because we don't have place in cemeteries to bury our dead so this is how bad it is here now. Uh, ci sono molte imprese e aziende che hanno chiuso e hanno uh, mandato i dipendenti a casa che lavorano attraverso il computer quindi evitano completamente qualsiasi tipo di spostamento che non sia giustificato e quando si va in giro bisogna firmare e compilare eh, un'autocertificazione in cui si certifica che non si è in quarantena, che non si è mh, portatori, cioè non si è positivi e che si è in giro per fare una determinata cosa che non si potrebbe non fare. L'Italian government ha taken some measures, of course, and they have put um... They have put us in lockdown, um, but unfortunately it's not a total lockdown. So um, there are reasons uh, that can justify you going out, like groceries or medical reasons, but unfortunately some, uh, some companies are still open and workers still, have, still might have to go to work. So... Um, And unfortunately some people just don't care about the lockdown and just go out. So uh, this is not helping and probably this is going to take a lot of time to get better because right now the situation is really not good. So take, the, take this moment to perhaps reflect and connect with others, even though it's at a distance. Reconnect with nature, uh, with the small things, in everyday life, and sort of bring positive change when all of this will be over, because it will be over. But I think change is necessary uh, from small everyday uh, actions to you know bigger ones that involve um, corporations and governments. Um, so a great, shift of consciousness consciousness is needed really is but i'm not gonna you know uh hesitate any further i'd like to um show you a bit of my um a bit of my life right now so let's go <laughs> so let's pay a visit to nonna to my grandma and see what she's up to there she is ciao nonna ciao <laughs> Come stai? Bene. <laughs> How are you? I love you. <laughs> Nonna loves you. She's letting you know. So this is what she's currently busy with. She's sewing, um, I believe, sheets. Yeah. Sono in sola queste, nonna? Sì. Oh, okay. So she keeps herself occupied. This is her bedroom. Um, she sometimes watches TV. She reads. And uh, yeah, she loves... Um, Uh, you know, sewing and those things. I'm, I'm current. I'm completely unable to do, by the way. So if you guys on SSL need some sales sewing, I mean, Nana can make herself useful. <laughs> she can help. She can perhaps join on the next adventure on SSL. You know, she's got all sorts of skills. So as I was telling you, my, my grandma, she's 83. She's healthy. She's okay. I mean, she's got her problems uh, as many people her age. Um... She has already lost some acquaintances to um, to coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, she wants to, to show yeah. us uh, a photo of my grandpa uh, mm -hmm. who passed away 21 years ago. Uh, but he used to be um, a captain on cargo ships, you know? So uh, <laughs> I used to spend most of his time on, on the oceans. Yeah, he definitely uh, was big inspiration to me to go out and travel and see the yeah. world and explore. E questa è 
Eh, ma una foto di nonno sulla nave non c'è? Oh, there you go. Con i cani? That's my grandpa on, on a ship with uh, some dogs, with his dogs. <laughs> so yeah, this is grandma's life right now. She's, um, she's always... Uh, She's always smiling. She looks at old pictures. She um, she likes to tell us all sorts of stories. She keeps us entertained and she, she keeps herself busy and motivated all the time. She's got good spirits. <laughs> Nanna, saluta. Bye bye. <laughs> ciao, ciao. E quindi eh, la vita è cambiata un po' tutti, si sta tanto in casa, si fanno tante faccende di casa, si fanno tanti lavoretti manuali magari, eh, si cucina tanto, si prepara tanto, eh, tante preparazioni, piatti che magari quando si ha poco tempo non si riesce a preparare, eh, quindi si gustano questi sapori magari un po' perduti, si sta tanto con la famiglia. Si guardano serie tv, si legge, eh, io studio, studio tanto e si sta in compagnia fortunatamente degli animali per chi ce l'ha eh, qua in casa. In our living room we've got plenty of books. Both my mom and I are avid readers. So we're fully stocked. A lot of great reads here. As you can see, more here. So we're well covered in that sense. Going out. So luckily we're um you know we have a, a small garden where we can sunbathe and read and do a bit of work and play. I have a dog. It's an Australian Shepherd. Again, those of you who follow me on Instagram have probably met him already. Because he's part of, of many of my videos and, and photos. Gosh. He always wants to play. He's very playful. <laughs> so we take him out three times a day. There's obviously, obviously something necessary that um, we have to, we are allowed uh, to do. Uh, so, you know, I take him for walks in the neighborhood. Uh, I can't go very far and I don't do that anymore, obviously. Um, this is not, you know... Uh, possible and that's okay I can put up I can put up with that for some time um, he understands as long as you know I throw in this <laughs> so this is our life <laughs> this is my mom mamma di ciao almeno ciao you know we have this small courtyard and the garden so we have a bit of, of room, you know, to, to move and enjoy sunshine. Uh, it's pretty quiet. Some of our neighbors are, are tourists, so they're not here in, at this time of the year. We have a few neighbors, people who live here all year long, but not, uh, not many. So it's pretty peaceful, but you know, it's not like we live in a, in a small flat in the center of some big gray city. So, you know, we, uh, we're pretty lucky. I'm quite grateful, uh, you know, I step out of of uh, the house and I see beautiful mountains, snow capped and fantastic blue sky and um, you know it's it's okay it's pretty bearable I can't complain I'm just uh, really thankful I'm, I'm healthy that my family is still healthy. Per quanto riguarda la situazione in Italia è che eh, al nord per ora c'è la concentrazione ovviamente eh, maggiore di morti purtroppo e di contagiati soprattutto le città di Bergamo e Brescia ma tutta la Lombardia. Per quanto riguarda invece il sud Italia eh, fortunatamente ci sono meno casi ma la situazione è ancora sotto controllo perché gli esperti dicono che il picco deve ancora arrivare. Eh, purtroppo due settimane fa tutti spaventati da questa situazione, molte persone che magari hanno famiglia eh, giù al sud e che sono qua per lavorare, eh, hanno fatto i bagagli e sono scesi giù, inconsapevoli e un po' in modo anche incosciente, di portare eventualmente eh, giù il virus, al sud il virus. Quindi si attenderanno nuove, nuovi picchi di 
contagio e si spera che questa situazione possa finire il prima possibile. Well, this is the situation here and I just please stay home everybody if you can and don't go out unless it's absolutely necessary. About 10 days ago I used to spend most of my time outside. You know, I love the outdoors, I love nature as most of you um who have watched the the series and who follow me maybe on 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 social networks know um i i miss being outside all the time going for hikes and doing sports and just enjoying nature which is such a huge part of my of my of my life really but um you know there's um there are times where we we have to do what what's what's needed to be done and um i hope all of you are 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 healthy and are safe and are smiling and are making the most of your lives um even if you have to spend more time inside right now at home there's tons of things we can do at home um luckily so i hope all of this will be will be over soon um we're just trying our best here and um i really really hope i can also sail <laughs> sometimes this year um and yeah i'd love to to you know join uh captain rick and crew and tiki tiki has been definitely missing i'm sure uh my talking to her 24 7 because i used to chat with her all the time teaching her strange sounds and Italian words and um, I do hope she misses me I don't think she does actually let's be honest I'm not entirely certain she remembers me but this is something that we'll find out hopefully soon in the next few months I would love to again to to join SSL for more adventures um, we see how everything goes again day by day you know um, so thank you for watching thank you for Um, for being part of this awesome community, SSL. I miss you guys. I'm I'm always just a message away. You know that um, I love to be in touch. And right now I also have the time. Um, you know, I have plenty of time. <laughs> um, so take care um, and see you soon. Ciao. It's delicious, but we need to wait 10 minutes. What's we got? It's a chicken curry and vegetable with a coconut mix sauce and ginger curry rice. Mmm. Yeah. Gotta have a look at that. Yeah, it's delicious, Capitan. When you want pasta. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's spicy. Yum, that's good. <laughs> That'll clean us out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, nice and coconut it. rice. It's hot. It's that hot. Mm. Who doesn't love coconut rice? I mean, come on. Yum. Mm -hmm. well, that's dinner on the lady tonight. Yeah. Red curry chicken, fresh vegetables, and coconut rice. Yeah, at least we've got good food on the lady. Setting up for a good meal. As you can see, we've got our table set up. A couple glasses of wine, bottle of wine. Oh, yeah. I think we'll hunker in tonight and maybe just watch a movie. Lay low. Tiki's gonna love some chicken and she absolutely <laughs> loves rice. She will gouge rice. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Pretty girl. And Tiki's holding up well. She's been enjoying her time with us, just hanging out. Hey, Tiki. Yes. Pretty girl. So that's it. We are going to sit down for dinner now soon and call it an evening. So you guys have a good night and uh, end of another day. <laughs>